Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Okami. So we're gonna continue on, fight off the rest of the bosses, and yeah, I'm not showing it, but hey, you all know what goes on in this, uh, gigantic ship of death and destruction. We lay the smack down, and we lay it down good. Or something. We need to get like the Mega Man music up in here. Cause this is what it kinda reminds me of. It's like, oh you gotta fight all the robot masters all over again. Awesome! Only you know you don't have to use specific powers on these guys, but it just reminds me of that. Oh Capcom, you're so funny. So this should lead to our final Celestial. Oh my. So what do you need to tell us about something awesome? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, I guess. So I guess technically it's inevitable that Orochi would have returned, but he just sort of pushed it along, you know? He'd like to have a nice even number, he's a hundred is a good number. And thus, in slaying Orochi, we unleashed all this other crap. And, you know. This is why we had to destroy all these guys and one girl. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Maybe not the world, but Japan, okay? Because <laughs> if that's the whole world, then it's really small. So now that we've killed uh, all of our friends, we can finally enter the center of the arc. Yeah, we know he fought with us. That that's not really news, but I kind of figured that they would be thankful for Waka because, you know, he likes justice and he likes good. And regardless of whether a roach is from the moon or not, he's a total ass. So you know, I can see Waka not being like down with that. So here's the final teleporter. Yeah, 
If you're dead, can't you technically? Oh, maybe in this game, in this game, there's clearly an afterlife. But hey, I don't know. Like he was in the afterlife already, so where did he go? Who knows? The after afterlife, I suppose. Anyway. Yes. It's our buddy Walker and he's fighting something. Uh I'd say he far outmatches you, Walker, no offense. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Well, he totally has to go down because, you know, we're not gonna stand up for that. That's, that's not a good thing. Because, do you remember what Ethan said? What would happen to her if the sun went out? Well, we're about to find out. Apparently that's a good enough cue for him to awaken from his darkness. Yeah, uh, he because it's so dark, he is able to use his power to suck out all of Amor Tarasu's power, and she's now essentially completely powerless. So. You know, he's taken her brush techniques into his own body. He doesn't use them, but yeah, he pulls the ultimate dick move and goes, Hey, here you go. Say goodbye to your powers. Damn, and he just happened to pick that day. What an ass. Now that's what he actually looks like. I have no idea what that thing is supposed to be, but he's, tr um, he's clearly trying to kill Amy, so Walk is gonna get away. Uh, he's trying to gain redemption for what happened in the past. He's more than aware that she has to survive and she has to make it to the celestial plane. Dude, you got a really screwed up haircut. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, even though he's technically part of the tribe that destroyed the Celestials, Abby still forgave him and befriended him and essentially took trust in him when he um, told her what he ne she needed to do in the future. Because like I said, uh, the Moon Tribe are clearly some sort of prophetic race that they could see into the future, even though I guess at the time Waka couldn't, but... He has to survive. Although it looks like he hasn't this time. <laughs> but we were supposed to save him, so what has that fair? Oh well. Next time we will find out. Sayonara.